time that I uh, made a new video and this time I'd like to try something a little different and, and do a little programming. I've been playing around with the Haskell language a lot lately and I have to say I'm really impressed with it as a language. It definitely has broadened my horizons as a programmer and it just kind of makes me look at the world differently. Um, it's both it's kind of contradictory because it's challenging but it's also simple at the same time but the it's just the way that it's organized is so elegant that it makes it really easy and easy to uh, reason about the code so this video is not going to be an introduction to Haskell I think there's been enough tutorials etc to do that and I'll try to explain what I'm doing as I go along I just won't be explaining everything um, but I've been watching some great other youtubers like uh, Jekor, Daniel Silverstone uh, Ryan Henricks, etc., make videos on Haskell, and it's kind of got me inspired to do a little bit of Haskell coding on my own channel. And I'll put links to their channel in uh, the description and on the screen so you can check them out. I definitely recommend it. But Haskell uh, makes it really easy to write stable code quickly. I think my favorite part about it is that I don't have to spend as much time or more time writing tests as I do writing code because the compiler mostly handles that job for you by catching um, most errors. For example, you don't have to check for nil values everywhere or make sure that the hash object you're trying to parse is, you know, organized correctly because if it's not, the compiler will throw a fit and your program will never compile. That being said, um, as you can already guess from the title of this video, I'd like to try and write an implementation of said in Haskell and just see how difficult that might be. But Haskell has a very easy way of allowing a purely functional program to uh, kind of take STD in, transform it, and pass it to STD out on the Unix pipeline. Uh, I can demonstrate that really quickly by writing a cat implementation. So let's say that cat is a function that takes a string and returns a string. So we'll just say cat given s will return s. And then we can just make that uh, main function for our program. And all it's going to do is interact with cat. So we'll save that. And then if I uh, if I run this program by using run GHC, that will um, kind of give us an implementation of the cat program. So you can see it behaves just like cat. If I uh, pass a here doc to it, for example, test this out, it will operate the exact same way as the uh, cat program. So you can see how ridiculously simple it was to make a simple cat implementation. And this is kind of what gave me the idea to write an implementation of said in Haskell. Um, so since we just did a series on said and we understand how the commands work with some confidence, let's use that knowledge and create this implementation. We can start by checking out the actual GNU said source code. Um, you can get it from this git repository, and I'll just uh, clone that down real quick. I thought I'd clone it down real quick. Taking a little bit more time than I thought. Okay. And if we uh, go in inside here in the uh, said directory, we can see all the source. And as you can see, it's pretty small. It's contained in only a few files. Uh, we can see how many lines there are in that file. We'll just match all files that end in uh, C or H for all the C or header files and count the lines in them. And you can see there's 5,648 lines. Um, let's remove the comments, though, and see how many lines of actual code is. 
and just to be generous we'll remove any lines that are blank as well so I can use a cat and then exclamation point dollar uh, exclamation point dollar sign and that will grab the last parameter from my last command so that will grab this right here and put it into this command you can find out other um, commands like that in man history as you can see uh, right here the last argument dollar sign it's inside man history and all these commands start with an exclamation point so we'll do that to grab uh, all those files and cap them out and then we can use sed to delete the lines that we don't want so any lines that uh, start with white space and have only white space till the end we'll delete them and any lines that start with white space and then encounter a forward slash will be comment lines we'll delete those as well and then let's count how many lines total that is and you can see that significantly less it comes out to about 4444 let's see if we can do better than that with our set implementation we're gonna try and write a Haskell set implementation that's less than 4,444 lines of code and hopefully it'll be easier to reason about too. So for this episode it's mainly going to be introductory. Uh, we can go ahead and uh, create a uh, project directory. We'll just call it sed. And I'll make a quick little uh, readme.markdown file for GitHub. We'll just say Haskell sed this is an implementation of sed and haskell uh, you can follow this project on youtube and we'll just give them a link to uh, my youtube page and uh, let's also just make a uh, basic sed uh, haskell file so we'll say module sed where and then we'll uh, borrow our, our main function from last time. This time it's going to interact with a function called sed, which we have not created yet. So let's go ahead and create that. And uh, we'll say sed is a function that, uh, well, instead of taking a string, let's use uh, text. So it takes some text and it converts it to some other text. And uh, the reason I want to use the text uh, type is it allows for uh, UTF-8 encoding, whereas the string type does not. So we'll use uh, text and we'll just say said t equals t. However, uh, we haven't imported the data.txt class, so we can do that. And now it's saying that we can't match the type text with string because interact takes a function that converts a string to a string and we're giving it a function that converts a text to a text so there's actually another library we can use called data.text.io that has a, uh, another interact function as you can see though now we're getting ambiguous occurrence of interact it could refer to either interact imported from prelude which is our original scope or interact imported from data.text.io which is what we just imported so to uh, help this issue or to resolve this issue and resolve future issues with the same sort of problem we can import these as uh, qualified libraries and then we would have to type data.text.text for every single one of these uh, text elements like this. However, that's kind of annoying, so we can use a as at the end of it. And then instead of having to type the full name of the library, we can just put um, what we imported it as. So now we'll use tio.interact and t.text, and we have our uh, functional cat implementation, and we've just named it said. Um, so it's basically the same program we wrote before, it's just using text instead of strings. Um, but I think that's probably pretty good for uh, first episode. We'll just go ahead and create a Git repository out of this. Uh, we'll add everything from it and make an initial commit. 
can take a look at that. And we can take a look at the, um, oops, I guess we can't. We get else files. Um, so here's our uh, first commit. I'll upload this to a GitHub repository and include the link in the description just in case you want to uh, follow along. I can go ahead and uh, use git to tag this. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. Let's take a look. Git tag. So you give it the tag name and then the commit. So I can use like git tag episode 1 for 44D4C7E. And now it has a tag of episode 1. All right, thanks so much for watching. Uh, let me know if this seems like a good idea to you or if you'd rather see more Raspberry Pi stuff or Bash stuff or Unix stuff or, um, you know, Linux stuff or whatever you subscribe to this channel for and you'd like to see more of, let me know. Um, and, or if you like this, please uh, give me a thumbs up and let me know or leave comments. I know there's a lot of variety on my channel and I want to know what you guys like so I can continue making content like that because I do appreciate your subscriptions and I appreciate you watching and I will see you on the next episode.